Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends, and welcome to JCB Live. This is the end of July, and for this end of July, it's all about sensory, it's all about emotion, it's all about vibration, it's all about the smell you discover this summer all around the world, wherever you are, Asia, Europe, Africa, South America, the United States, Canada, you smell. We have tonight for you an expert of sensory. She is the queen of sensory. She created her whole life all around the sense. And this is very exciting because she discovered wine a few years ago, some wonderful wines from Mendocino we're gonna be trying as well. And we will be talking about what drives her about fragrance, perfume, sensory, what she looks for, how she analyzes it, and who she is. So dear friends, I'm very pleased to introduce you the CEO of her own firm, it's so exciting, named E.M. Aroma for her name, Eva Marie Lind, like the charm. Woohoo! Did you see that, Eva, what I did for you? Yes. Did you see the energy was as powerful as your tattoo? <laughs> One of them. Ooh, would you be willing to share no. where you have more? <laughs> Something tells me. Some things remain mystery. <laughs> oh, you think it's better that way? Huh? Well, we're going to need temptation, but this one is beautiful. I could see that this one has a lot of flowers and aromas on it. What is this one about on your right shoulder? Oh, this one. It's a long uh, story and um, it goes down my back. Um, this, my grandfather did when I was 10. And it is my Gaelic name, which is Kalina, Kalina Brianne. And my name is Ava, but yeah. um, it, um, and I had the decision when I became older would I remove it or would I redo it? And uh, my artist, my tattoo artist, Matthew, he decided we would redo it because there is a Celtic uh, superstition that is if you, if you tattoo a child before they come to puberty, they are protected by this ink. And if, you, if it does not change color, then it means they aren't, they're only half worldly. They're only half here. They're actually wow. residing in another realm and that realm is protecting them. This was my grandfather. He was very, <laughs> very spiritual. This is so cool. Thank you so much. I had no idea that ink possibly as a tattoo protects you. So thank well, you. It, it's actually, you know, the book, um, The Mists of Avalon. Yeah, I read uh, in my 30s and uh, inside they talk on it. It was the first time I ever found reference where it's called blue woad and it's a herb and that herb makes the ink. And it's actually true. <laughs> it wasn't just wow. a story. <laughs> so. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Is there another place you're willing to share where you have a tattoo that you recommend others do it? Oh, yes. I love that. So tell us about this one. And um, this one is Lassia Andara in, uh, in Italian means to let go. Oh. To, to let it go, to be in the, in the moment, in the presence of knowing that there's, there's more waiting and to not be attached to the emotions of the moment. And it's the iris, which is one of the plants I was studying deeply between France and Italy. And it came at a time when I was doing a project in Italy to the orris root. Wow, you gotta tell us about the iris because you know, I send you some of the perfume we make. Yes. With Olivia Giacobetti. And as you know, number 13. Yes. Iris is very present yes. as one of the most refined 
high profile and unique, unique flower in fragrances. That's the one. So tell us about the Iris. Um, well, for me in perfumery, it's one of the most mysterious, one of the most difficult to get qualities, one of the most difficult to blend, to really uh, allow it to have performance inside a perfume. And it's a fascinating plant because it does not create its powerful ar aromatic molecules until about seven years. So you're dealing with a plant that you're kind of hoping, you're planting it, you're watching it flower, you're waiting three years, you're then digging up rhizomes, you're then pro you're processing those rhizomes, you're drying them, you're tumbling them, you're chopping them, you're doing all of these manipulations that will encourage the aromatic molecules you hope from the way it was stewarded and cared for on the land. And then you pull it in and you create what's called a butter. Generally it's butter first. And um, you have a, a variety of different extracts from the auras, but they all have different aromatic uh, nuances and uh, postures and presence within what you create, but also on their own. I so love when you when you sit with the organoleptics, for instance, of it, to sit with maybe a butter and then to sit with an absolute, it's, you they're so drastically different. And but the everything about the flower in nature is so fragile, so yeah. fragile, but yet it has this essence that creates so much power and strength and and ability if you put the right the the right partners with it. <laughs> Sounds like me. Yeah. Very fragile. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I thought I, you were I, fragile. <laughs> I love how you describe it. And I'm with you. And dear friends, for all of you, you love fragrance. You love our JCB fragrance. This is the most expensive uh, ingredient is actually the iris flower today. And Olivia Giacobetti, with whom we work with on those two fragrance, number zero and uh, number 13, which is my lovely wife's favorite, this is the one, is uh, a lot of iris. So I'm so pleased, Eva, you, you love the iris as your favorite flower as well. These were the two that were out of your spectrum that attracted me the most. Ooh, I'm delighted. We found two out of five. This is a good percentage. <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed all of them. But. <laughs> Thank you. So Eva, what um, made you become such an aroma, you know, expert? I mean, you're a flavorist, a therapist, a, an aromatist, as we call it in French. So, and I understand as well an agronomist. So tell us about all that. How did you become so much in touch with your own self as well as the senses? A lot of it, I think, is a mystery, but um, also in the uh, early part of my life, uh, I went through very deep tragedy in my 20s. And um, the recovery from that actually came from an aromatic plant and an aromatic oil, which I really did not know uh, the science of or the, or the particulars. And which it had- Which was that? It was basil. It was oh. holy basil. And um, I had to know why. Uh, at the time I was, uh, I had created a natural food co-op. And I was working very deeply in organics before it was very popular. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I had to understand, it's kind of the way my brain is, I have to understand why things are having the impact that they are. And I began studying. And then suddenly I began uh, blending. And one of the first blends, one of the first 
creations I created won an award and I couldn't quite figure it out. And then I went on from there to work at a clinic off the University of Michigan. And the doctor there made me a therapist before I had any of my trainings. So the process that happened after that is I would discover through a research study that I participated in that I was a synesthet. And my synesthesia is when I smell, I see color. And when I see color, I smell. Wow. So when I, when I create with oils, I'm painting like a painter or I'm making a piece of music like a musician. So I learned this about myself. So it made sense on the perfumery end. And then I, in the early 90s, I helped develop a nonprofit here in America called the American Alliance of Aromatherapy. And I became their educational director. Mm. And through, through them, I met um, a group of French doctors and they were so impressed by my knowledge and ability to sit and talk about chemistry and about sensory perception and not just the external senses. I studied also very deeply the internal senses because Steiner and Waldorf training was my, was my background. And, um, yes, and, love it. and so then they gave me scholarship to um, the last existing medical college in Paris wow. and sp sponsored me for a year. And I went in and I trained in pharmacy, in hospital, in um, south of France, on GC, MS, um, like really understanding all the technicalities that I already intuitively had sort of felt I knew. But now I had the basis and the foundation. And so then I did the same thing with my perfumery. And uh, I became a college educator. I had to like create curriculum around what I had learned. So it's kind That's of- That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Dear friends, you know, Eva and I are meeting for the first time. We've been referred by a very close friend of ours named Julia smith Madrone and We've all discussed the idea of getting together and we haven't because of this COVID situation, but we will soon. And we have so much in common because we are so much, as you know, into aroma, fragrance, essences, and obviously organic and biodynamic as well. So I'm so impressed. So Eva, I'm gonna ask you to describe JCV number nine because this is one of my favorite sparkling wine we make mm -hmm. in the world of Carneros, and this is a Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay blend from 2016. So what do you think of it? Tell us. Well, in terms I, of aroma, flower, fragrance, all of the above. Um, I opened it about five minutes before we came on, so that was nice. And then I tried it in two shapes. So I have the, the larger shape and the smaller, the flute and the larger, which what I find really interesting is the, it's vastly different in the, the container you're drinking from. I tend to prefer this one just because it's more expansive. Um, Me too. Yeah, I, I tend to like this, this much better. I think this is uh, restraining what it can like produce for you. Um, I found it um, very supple. Uh, I wrote um, some notes um, that I had a bit of stone fruit, a bit of apple, but the apple was interesting because it, it's kind of, for me, it's a bit of a cross between yeah. something that's green, but something that's pink, like it kind of a cross between it. Um, I have a really nice essence of um, lime, the, but, but more than the lime fruit. The, I have a bit of the leaf. I have a bit of the flower in my nose, in my smell. Yeah. Um, I had a, a tiny bit of quince, I felt. Um, I felt like the acidity of it, I feel the acidity of it has like this really nice backbone. Like it's really yes. makes you feel very um, supported, you know, where sometimes when you have a, 
uh, effervescent wine, you feel kind of, you know, you're exploding. <laughs> but this one makes me feel very present and very, very grounded. And I liked that about it. The minerality I liked quite a bit. What a description. I love it. So, um, Eva, if you don't mind, yes. you know, you've done an amazing job describing it, and thank you for taking notes on it. Uh, show our friends how important the nose is, even more than sometimes the mouth, mm -hmm. in terms of fragrance or tasting wine, because you did such an amazing job. So, show us your intellectual organization in tasting. Guide us so we do the same. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I do it a bit different. Um, when I'm doing a tasting, I, I like the five S's, um, uh, you know, to see and uh, to sniff and or to swirl first, sorry, and then to sniff and then to... Um, sit and savor. I like that guidance for people because it's very, a lot of my work is about, although I could talk terribly technical because that's my training, I try really not to. I try to come from the emotive aspects, the accessibility aspects. I want, I want the everyday person to be able to pick up a glass and go, oh, can do I can do this. This is not that's difficult. Fine. I can do this. Like and and get excited about that. And I that's what I've consistently seen from my tastings and from my work. So perfumers, when they smell, you know, wine people, I I watch wine people dipping in and I do the same. And I always try to go side to side. Um, but for me, it's really not that way. So usually I prep myself. I do, as I would do in yoga, I do like a pranayama breath so that I'm preparing. So I'm breathing in. You're clearing. I'm breathing out. Yeah, I'm breathing doing it with in. you. And I'm breathing out. So I do that usually twice. And what happens when you're doing that breath, it's not just that you're... Mm. you're clearing your nose or your palate you're creating a, a climate inside between the heart the lungs the respiratory uh and also the sacral you know that's how right gro how grounded you are i'm so doing it as we speak the sacral <laughs> i just did it dylan is doing it jen is doing it we're all we're doing it in the New Yoga Studio you just created right now. I was trying I to think. Them. I just read this wonderful piece of research. Just, oh, Jonathan Mueller. Jonathan Mueller just wrote this wonderful, he's a neuropsychiatrist. Uh huh. And so much of my work around oils, although I could sit and talk therapeutically, because I was trained in 220 oils and I was trained internally, externally. Passeris, Pastore, the whole medical range. But wow. for me, just like drinking wine and the, the division between technicality and emotion, I really deal with the emotion. And he made this wonderful statement that stuck with me so strongly in that when we are smelling, when we are creating this relationship with our senses, we are actually creating an internal um intimacy with ourselves not with others not with the world but with ourselves and i thought ah oh, i haven't really thought on that for a long period of time like how often do we really express intimacy to ourselves and um and so it the processes by which i smell and i taste all of a sudden became so clear to me because that's exactly what they do. You're creating, just like you're doing alternate breath, you're creating this persona and this climate for yourself of intimacy. You're going into yourself and becoming one with yourself. So another thing in perfumery, when we do um, I have one of your strips, um, so, you know, if we've done a perfume strap, we spray the perfume, 
a lot of the breath is about creating currents of air. And what you find is if you do this with your glass as well, so once you swirl. I'm doing it with you. And I love smell. to be your student. So take a, a sniff first, but then. Oh, a very different feel. Do a waft, waft with your other hand. It's yeah. like, but you see how this all of a sudden went for me, it was like very crisp at the top yeah. and kind of that stone fruit in the pear, but then all of a sudden pear just gets very big for me. It's like, it's like when the tree is blooming, you know, it's, totally. not when you're, and it's not when you're picking the fruit or eating the fruits when it's blooming. So it, it almost does create a bloom. So we, we practice that. And then the other thing we practice, which is very powerful, is um, what we call, so you have orthonasal. So you breathe yes. in, that's your orthonasal, your olfactory. Yep. All of you. But, but then there's retronasal. So yes. retronasal takes just a little bit more. They use it very often in beer, beer and coffee even, but they don't really in wine. And I thought, why? Why not? Why not in wine? So retronasal is basically you're doing if you're doing your your swirl, you're doing your your sniff. But then what you're doing when you're getting ready to sip is you're closing your nose. You're going to be closing your nose. Then you're going to sip and you're yeah. going to fill your mouth with the juice as you normally would when you swallow you're going to breathe out and unplug your nose at the same time. So. <laughs> Let's do it together. I'm doing it with your wine. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Did it really have that impact? <laughs> but you see how it's it's a completely different. It's reaching your olfactory and it's reaching your nasal area and it's reaching even oh. for me into the brain area in a completely different manner. So when I when I'm working with wine, just like I work with oils, I'm working with emotives. So not only the aroma and the flavor, but how is this, how is this wine impacting me? Is it making me feel joyful? Or is, and the more you do this, the more you begin to have this emotional connection. I to totally me. see it. <laughs> no, thank you immensely. This is a great way to do it. And you know, I taste a lot of wines per day as yes. we make wine. And I used to do that even at school. But now I'm going to use it again. This is a great advice to, uh, to practice. Now, I just served your first wine. We're tasting Chateau Frais, right? And you're going to tell us all about it because this is quite a wine from Mendocino. But as you taste it, um, what inspired you to become an expert in terms of what we call the sensorial olfactory world. Because you're one of the leading experts in this world. So we're very honored to be together today. And what, what, was, what inspired you to do this? Um, I had never, there really is nothing for me that has impact on body, mind, spirit, and soul all in one circle as our perception of smell and taste. And when I began working in the worlds of coffee and tea and flavor, creating beverages, um, uh, culinary, working in the culinary world, working in mixology, I began to relate more to that flavor and taste are two different things, completely different, but yet we don't really pay attention to that. And 
so for me, the more I was in tune with flavor, the more I recognized that it coincided with smell and they weren't separate. And to me, I feel it's a number one key to wellness. And that is a passion and a drive is to be healthier inside this world, inside of ourselves. And, uh, and if we can also advance that between wearing a perfume, drinking a wine, <laughs> um, how marvelous, because these are usually considered a, an external uh, activity. Why isn't it an internal activity? Why isn't it a daily activity? And I think living in Italy and France, especially my relationship to wine, wine became more like food and medicine. And so again, it, it circled back to my work where there was the pleasure and the necessity. So they, they were hand in hand. So I, I love that, the pleasure and the necessity. This is very, very well said. So explain us as well the mission of your personal studio, which is called EM A Home. Because I think we're here to mention to the world that you exist and what you do at the boundaries of flavor, fragrance, aroma, wine. It's really spectacular. So as we having a toast with your wine, Chateau Frais. Chateau Frais, Pinot Gris. Beautiful wine. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm clearing. <laughs> I'm going to hold my nose. <laughs> oh. You see, so I'm then, a good student, I listen. Right? So then another thing that I do with the wine groups is you just did this. Um, I would say that when you, usually I encourage you to, to sip it and swallow first so you can see the differences, yeah. the variances. But when you do the variances, what generally in this wine pops out for me is it has a lot of magnolia a lot of magnolia bloom, like in the wow. spring. And, um, and so um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, I know, that's, that's, uh, that's okay. So what inspires you to oh, drink? Oh, I, I know, I remember now. You're so back. what I would do as a perfumer, which is just wonderful, is do the practice of sense exploration. Yes. And Sense exploration, so I would go to my repertoire of, of perfume ingredients, find my magnolia, take a strip, put a bit of the magnolia on the strip, and then we would do the, the sip in the saver, and then the retronasal sip in the saver, and then we would do sense exploration, and sense exploration would be smelling that magnolia and then doing the process again. And what happens for people, if you don't tell them it's magnolia, is maybe eight times out of 10, people will get it. They'll go, oh my God, there's a flower. There's like a white flower. Oh, it's magnolia. So it's a really powerful um, introduction, utilizing the perfume ingredients alongside the wine, because you're enhancing what's in the glass and you're allowing people who may not generally be able to identify or to really enjoy it at that depth to do that to have that process that's right i love it so this wine is from mendocino it says it's tray cool right which is written on the back label it's a pinot gris Say fantastic. So you make it. So the so I've been artist in residence with Fry for two years and two months. Wow. Slowly my residency will close. Don't know where I'm going, but 
<laughs> here I am in California, we'll see. And um, uh, so the beautiful thing is I, I already had a relationship with the, the people who are sort of at the top of fry wine. Um, and so coming here, I was able to, one of my fascinations and what drove me through my travels and drove me to do the work that I do is, is traveling to understand transparency, to really understand how my materials are created. So I've done that to about 40 countries now. Wow. And so when I came here, it was the same thing. I wanted to I wanted to understand the terroir. I wanted to understand the error. I wanted to understand, you know, how many miles is this piece of property from the sea or from the mountains or I, it's really fascinating to me. And this happens in perfumery. So a lot of my work when a fragrance house brings me in, they bring me in as a natural specialist because my palate is naturals. And they might say to me, this, this actually was a scenario. A perfumer might say, I have to use geranium. I have to use it. The, the client wants me to use geranium and it's not working. It's not working no matter what percentage. So then I look at, I review the, the formulation and then I might say, well, what about, you're using a French, you're using uh, a bourbon, but why aren't you using an Egyptian? That's and then right. they're, they're like, really? And then, and then we go through the formula using the new sourcing and using new percentages and all of a sudden it works. So I feel the same thing with wine. Um, it, this year I'll, I'll be here through harvest on purpose to really identify to the grapes. I want yeah. to understand the grapes. I want to understand the different sections of our properties and um, there's about 400 acres here. So it's a nice starting space for me to be able, so the Pinot Gris for instance would come not just from one block, but several. Well, what happens is if your olfactory is very keen, they smell and taste different. So you can actually then blend that. So you're, it's, it's singular, it's a singular, varietal but you're working with these different spaces so you're able to um to blend i love that i mean that's i want to make something smell and taste as good you've as made can. fragrance you've made candles you've made essences so now it's wine now it's wine <laughs> well let's try as we have a few minutes left together on this beautiful last day of july let's try your red as well wow tray cool this is chocolate this is plum this is black currant i mean there's a lot of flavors here but how was it to sensorily travel to 40 countries what was the big learning for you um well i never anticipated that it would be so many countries and it it gets in your blood you know, this time of COVID is very interesting where we're all a bit landlocked because I was quite used to getting on a plane every other month and being somewhere different. And um, I'm really very happy that I did that for so many years because I don't have too many regrets right now, even though there are several countries I would really like to go and explore. Um, so I. Uh, it's, it's very humbling. It's very grounding. Yes. It, uh, it keeps you um, very removed from your ego. Uh, it keeps you very sensible. Mm. Um, I adore learning other cultures, how they think and work. And many times, it's definitely not a culture that I might be able to integrate with 90% of the time. For instance, I fit very well in France. I fit perfectly in Italy, but in Egypt, 
in Nepal, in the, in the hills of Nepal, like going to the Himalayas, I, I, I was out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And by putting yourself out of your comfort zone, it's interesting how coming back home, your relationship to everything is so different. For sure. Now, yeah. from an aromatic standpoint, essence standpoint, yes. what do you, what's the big takeaway of going to those 40 countries? And what did you bring into what you teach, what you do that is fundamental? Hi, oh, interesting question. I think um, I think the essence of never getting too caught up in myself mm. and always recognizing that we're an element of a, a larger system that um, it was easy for me to become a minimalist. It was easy for me to, um, things that many people would struggle with became very easy for me because I became more significant to the whole and less significant to the moment and the space at hand, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure it makes sense, yeah. Well said, wow. So a humbling experience in many ways. Very, very much. And, and just recognizing how, how large the world is, how, you know, the, um, yeah, how small we are. <laughs> how, are gonna, I, how, how rather insignificant we are, and yet, how absolutely valuable and magnificent we are. Because, we each are. Yes, exactly. We're, we are all a part of a larger, something larger that's happening. And to, to me, that's really the message of COVID, I think, is to get back to our sensibilities, our roots. Little philosophic, but that's how I feel. <laughs> no, that's great. So in terms of that, give us an idea of your new book. <clears throat> My new book is interesting uh, journey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was, um, did the wine make you sneeze? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and again and again. <laughs> The energy of the no sulfide. It's yes, exactly. It's all the earth. <laughs> That's it. It's the it's earth, all the earth in the and the ice. Yeah. And the, yeah, lots of hay. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm feasting of excitement. <laughs> um, what was your question again, please? About your new book. Oh, uh, the new book. So the new book is very fascinating. I don't even know to share this, but I'm I'm a terribly honest person. And they usually say, what you see is what you get. It's usually true. Um, I was very on a, a course with the book, you know, like how to integrate perfume and wine. And um, how would I lay out this book? I have a a lovely friend, a man who's a well-known illustrator in Italy, and he got very excited and wanted to, we, we've been wanting to do a book together, and he got very excited about it, and all of a sudden, <laughs> one day I'm researching, and I see the perfume of wine by a man, an author, and a man who calls himself an Anya, Anya Parfumer, I'm not quite sure I'm pronouncing it right, but we're, we're the opposite. <clears throat> My background is perfume to wine, his is wine to perfume. Okay. So his father was a, a vintner and, uh, and he works in the world of wine and he's already crossing the worlds of perfume and wine. 
and we actually connected recently and have talked a little bit. Um, and but but it was a very good journey. All these journeys are very good. It reminded me of when I did my first book, Aromatiques, and who I am as an individual. And as I said earlier, although it's very vastly important to me to understand technicality and chemistry and all the in, in agronomy, for instance, you know, what is the pH of the soil? How, you know, how are the vines clipped? How are the roots going? I want to know all this. It's just who I am and it helps me understand. But ultimately, I'm a sensualist. Yes. They called me a centralist in my book, and I was really horrified. My editor chose this, <gasps> a centralist guide to aromatic oils. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I like it. It would make it's me going to ruin book. my reputation. But the fact is, is that that's who I am. That's how I view life. Just as I talked about, I view emotions, and that is extremely important to me. And, um, and so, his book is wonderfully techni technical, technicalities, a lot of technicalities, a lot of chemistry. It's very important, especially if you want to make a good wine. But that's not who I am. You know, it's not who I want to express to people. So the book is now has done a metamorphosis in becoming exactly how I am with people, making things accessible, talking about the fundamentals. For instance, I just did a tasting with women and I talked about all, how perfume and wine are so synergistic, how they go together hand in hand. And one of the practices we did was looking at the perfume pyramid and understanding volatility, which is a bit technical, but not, too deep, and then how that relates to the plants. So I love it. The citrus, the fruit, the 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 flowers, going down until you get to the barks and the roots, and practicing that in the mouth, because there's practices also inside the mouth that I do where you break that down, so you're actually dealing with a perfume in the mouth. So these are the types of things I think. I would like to express and bring forward in a fun way, in a fun way, not too terribly serious and leave the technicality and the serious to other authors. <laughs> so let's do that with this wine in the mouth. So the guide, mouth. Us, guide us, you, you did on the nose earlier, do the mouth. Through the mouth. Ooh, ooh we're going to the mouth, dear friend. <laughs> And then I have one more very big question for you. Okay, in the mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want to look at uh, what I sent to you so that I see if I sent you. You know what's really beautiful about this um, wine, this blending, which is a Bordeaux style but is that many of the notes that hit the nose hit the mouth. And so for instance, this is just a for instance in it. What's beautiful in that rhythm of a pyramid is there is an essence within this wine in the heart that is like bittersweet cocoa yeah but also labdanum and if you know labdanum in perfume i'm sure you do which is the sisters so many types of extractions of it but there's they're organoleptically when it, you break it down it can break down from this kind of green resiny um a very piercing pronounced top to this that's right this beautiful sort of dry earthy um, woody uh, essence, almost like, you know, walking through a forest. And what happens with this one for me is on the nose, we'll just take that one ingredient, that labdan pops out as, as its presence. 
but in the mouth, it breaks to all those different variables and then That's plays right. off for me, plays off of the other variables. Mm -hmm. Another note in this, there is a lot of the violet on the edges, but in the mouth, the violet really expresses and generally in sort of the center of the tongue. So that's what I really love about this way. No, I'm, I'm with you and you, you're helping me to find the violet, which is great. Mm. Tip of tongue. And I love that strong presence of chocolate and plum. Yes. Together that is so seductive as you are. Thank you. Grazie. <laughs> prego, prego. <laughs> so now a big question, Eva. Oh dear. I'm going to hold you for two more minutes because I know oh, a lot please. of our friends want to do dinner and we've learned so much about aroma, essence, wine tasting and all of that. What is your dream? Besides meeting a Frenchman and being happy forever again. Well, you know, it's very funny because when I got the questions, uh, sort of pre questions, this, you know, this might be what you're asked. And I thought, oh my, what is my dream? And honestly, <laughs> as personal as it is, I am single in the world. I have been single for Woo! some time. And so, everybody in the chat, chime in. Dylan is already raising his both hands. You have, so you have a date it, in Napa Valley. It is a dream, but the dream is that. Ooh, Jen can, is raising her hands too. So, you oh, know. Oh, great. Perfect. You never know. Put your <laughs> side, you fancy, you have it all. It's a mystery. Um, but, you know, it's. It's not just in meeting oh, someone, it's in meeting that uh, individual that doesn't want to change you, can accept all the, all the frailties. It's very, it's very rare in life, you know. To you think that individual it. exists or is it an insect or a snake or a bird or reincarnation of a soul? <laughs> and then I think the other is, you know, my grandfather had a very large impact. Um, I grew up a foster child. Um, yeah. You asked about my perfumery, which is really a little bit fascinating in that um, my, my biologic mother, I would learn in my 40s, was actually a perfume model for Guerlain. Ooh. And um, it's very interesting, the impact of aroma, because when I was in my 20s, I was making salves and different things um and i had this passion for benzoin had this passion for that vanilla yeah. resiny note and i learned later that this is a note in shalimar and this was the perfume my my mother was a uh, from with yeah, the, yeah exactly uh, and wow. it makes you wonder did it start in the womb did it start in the womb for sure Exactly. I think you're a product of your DNA and your DNA has defined eventually yeah. how you will evolve. So remember, you have a date with Dylan. He's behind the camera. You're going to see him shortly. He's volunteering to have an aromatic session with you. Or it's, it's yours. <laughs> but I will say, I will well, I'm going to be jealous. I need to be his chaperone that day. Can I be? Sure. <laughs> more the merrier but you know Ooh. i think i think my dream is really in my professional side is really to i would love to see scent and flavor become just as we go to the store and we get vitamins we pay attention to how that can impact us from a wellness level i that's very very big passion for me it's where perfume as wellness came from um to really integrate and then also work with our earth work with it work with the soil work with the the naturalness of what we've been given and unfortunately humanity has destroyed somewhat to find a way to recover that i mean i'm very passionate about that i could tell Ooh la la it requires another session in person. You're going to have to come from Mendocino 
to Napa Valley and we'll do one where we are right now at Secret Indulgence, which is the place to do it. You indulge in secret and you feel the essence of Mother Nature and the electricity of the frequency of the site. I very much appreciate your work, um, Jean Charles. I um, I actually I I discovered this. Yes. On your, on your website and uh, read. I'm in love with that one because it's all about the secret it's energy. Yeah, it's yeah. very lovely, and it really does bring a recognition to sensory perception and our senses and how they interface with us and you're doing that work very lovely and you know it, a winemaker making perfume it's uh, Thank congratulations you. <laughs> well you're very kind so now eva it's your last statement to the world so the last question is not even a question it's whatever you want to say to all our friends with us today and tomorrow because you know we have so many people with us tonight, but many will be watching at another time. So what's your big, big message to all of us? It could be wise, it could be wild, it could be about tattoo, it could be about terroir, it could be about aroma, fragrance, love, passion. Oh dear. Um... I love how you look up rather than down for inspiration. <laughs> The cosmos. Yes. <laughs> um, to be my message. Uh, I'll leave this interview and I'll have uh, all types of brilliance on the tip of my tongue. Um, I don't know, just to be um, present. I think to understand how large we are singularly in ourselves, yes. in, in the aspect of what we're, the ability for us to enjoy, the ability for us to make a difference. I, one of my projects last year was with Jane Goodall and uh, I worked on a project and products with her and IFF LMR and it was such a joy to have her as a client so to speak because she really she really brought me back to the essence of myself yes and and I think especially in these times that were very very have been very difficult for many, not so much for myself in some respects because of my background and my history and the way I grew up, I integrated, I was okay. I was still doing my artistic endeavors and solid, being solitary is, has been a part of my journey. Um, but I think, you know, coming back to our essence, you know, and understanding just how how large that is and how much that we can obtain from that on a day-to-day -day basis. It really fuels you, you know, for the project. Absolutely. Maybe that. Well, beautifully said, Eva. And congratulations and thank you so much for thank you. sharing that level, prego, prego mille, <laughs> that uh, those words of wisdom. You know, it's very exciting. You're the first really, you know, as you say in your uh, bio, designer, perfumer, flavorist, therapist, and agronomist, sensory sommelier, concept formulator, artist. I love it. So you are all what I love. And um, at the end of this month of July, I want to wish you an amazing summer. I hope we get to see each other soon in Napa Valley. Come and visit. And dear Dylan. friends, for the bachelors out there, <laughs> go in the chat. Dylan is number one. Jen is number two. But then thereafter, <laughs> everything can happen. So see you soon. Yes. Yes. And thank you so much. It was thank very, you. very exciting. I'm very honored. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.